Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here, and we've been working on this one for quite some time. I hope you enjoy it. In collaboration with Max Weinbeck, who I did have the pleasure of meeting, awesome dude, I'm presenting to you a huge exclusive iPhone 12 Pro leaks dump, as well as iOS 14 and some other products sprinkled in. So strap in, let's take a look at what Apple's doing next. First off, I wanna address Max Weinbeck's credibility. This is our second year working together. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And he did predict a number of things correctly in 2019. The matte back glass on the 11 Pro, the green color, the ultra wide lens, dark mode, and automatic dark mode as well as a redesigned volume HUD and the AirPods Pro naming. So this guy does have a fairly solid track record, not to mention all the S20 and S20 Ultra leaks, although there are a number of leaks that didn't come true from 2019. First, let's start with the March event. Max Weinbach's source is telling him that it's very likely Apple will not be holding a March event after all, that they'll just be doing a press release like last year. They dumped a bunch of new products out just by updating the website, including the new AirPods 2. It wasn't officially announced. They'd have to figure it out with the CDC, find a venue, and at this point with so much chaos happening in the production line, it's much easier for Apple just to host an online event, not to mention safer. Plus Apple did just pull out of the SXSW Film Festival, not to mention a lot of other companies have canceled upcoming events. It definitely makes sense. It's a logical thing to do and Mark Gurman agrees, Apple is most likely going to do an online event. In regards to the outbreak and how it's affecting Apple, it's very possible that we won't be seeing one of the products Apple had planned for March, instead seeing it later in September. This is coming from some random dude on Twitter though, so take it with a grain of salt. Digitimes is reporting some good news for the iPhone SE 2 or the upcoming just iPhone. They're saying that it's entering the final production verification stage, which is pre mass production. So they are making good headway on that. And that gives me even more reason to believe that the upcoming iPhone will just be a random press drop on the website instead of a full-blown event. Ming-Chi Kuo himself is commenting on this outbreak saying Apple's full production of the iPhone line will not go back to normal until quarter two of 2020. They are getting it under control. Even Tim Cook himself is reassuring that mostly they've got a handle on things and from here on out, it should be getting better, not worse. And Mark Gurman of Bloomberg is reporting that Apple stores throughout America are reporting low stock of the iPad Pros, the current models, which could be a sign of an imminent refresh for the 2020 iPad Pros with a 3D time of flight sensor. CoinX is confirming that the new iPad Pros will 100% have new cameras. That'll be one of the biggest focuses of them. And that raises a question for me. How is it going to look? We know that Apple is going to implement the 3D time of flight sensor. How though is the question? Maybe my theory on the ring flash could be the way that Apple implements it on the iPad Pro. That's just speculation, but whatever Apple chooses to do is what we eventually will likely see on the 2020 iPhones. Okay, almost there at the juicy stuff. But the information is reporting that this year's upcoming iPad Pros will be receiving a smart keyboard with a built-in trackpad. We heard earlier about this trackpad that it would include keys using the scissor switch key mechanism. Also, they would be backlit, but now Apple will be adding a trackpad very similar to the new Bridge Pro. And iOS 13.4 basically rewrites the keyboard from the ground up on the iPad, all the shortcuts, according to Steve Trotton Smith. So it's very clear here that Apple is working on a huge refresh for the iPad and the smart keyboard. Okay, getting into those windback rumors. Let's start with the AirTag. He's saying that Apple is working on a loss mode for AirTags. So if you find something with one of these built in, you can scan it against your iPhone and you'll be able to get the contact information of the person it belongs to for easier contacting. But it will be a feature that the owner must enable. It'll be called lost mode. And there's a chance that it might not make it into the final build. And found by a Reddit user in the latest iOS 13.4 beta software, Apple is enabling Bluetooth low energy long range protocol on the iPhone 11 and 11 Pros which presumably is the technology that the AirTag will use. It basically quadruples the range of Bluetooth without increasing the power draw. It's very efficient, especially for an AirTag, which will have a system in chip design. It'll be very compact, Bluetooth low energy, the U1 chip. This thing is going to be a lot more advanced than the rumors have let on. Okay, and getting to the good stuff, the iPhone 12 Pro leaks. So for the first time in years, Apple will be crossing the megapixel threshold that they've been at for quite some time, 12 megapixels, and bumping up the sensor quality, potentially up to 64 megapixels. Weinbeck is reporting that they're testing various sensor sizes. 64 megapixels would be the Sony sensor, very likely, and Apple will be focusing heavily on the camera for the iPhone 12 Pro. They already did so with the 11 Pro, and clearly the S20 Ultra showed Apple what's what with that massive 108 megapixel sensor size. So Apple does need to retaliate, and a 64 megapixel iPhone would be 
quite adequate. We don't necessarily need 108 megapixel sensors. And this report is supported by Maka Takara, who previously reported the sensor sizes on the 2020 iPhones would be getting bigger. It might be a little difficult to notice, but in our concept, we bumped up the lens size about 10 to 15% versus the iPhone 11 Pro series. It's very hard to notice. So I think Apple will be counting on the fact that it's already so big, what's an extra 10, 15%. As for the ultra wide lens, Apple will be widening the aperture 35% more to an aperture roughly around 1.6, 1.7, equivalent to the OnePlus 7T. The actual angle, the field of view will stay the same. It's just the aperture that's getting better, presumably to include the new night mode while using the ultra wide sensor. The focal length on the ultra wide will be changing as well. Max Weinbeck is reporting that you'll be able to get 2.2 centimeters closer to objects and be able to focus still freely using that ultra wide sensor. This is presumably some sort of macro mode on that lens. A lot of smartphones are adopting this feature. Personally, I don't need that, but why not include it? And Weinbach is reporting that Apple is adding night mode to the selfie camera, the telephoto lens, and the ultra wide lens. So that feature is spreading from just the standard wide angle lens to every lens on your iPhone. No matter which lens you're using or whether or not it's the selfie camera, you'll get a great shot at night. No word on optical image stabilization on the ultra wide lens yet though. He also reports that Apple will be further improving smart HDR. So that feature where you take a picture and it uses nine composite images to combine them and make the perfect quality image on the iPhone will be getting better. Inside sources are calling it smart XDR, although that won't be the official name. And the next Pro Max smartphone, the 12 Pro Max, the battery will be getting bigger by about 10%. Max Weinbeck reports it'll be increasing in density to about 4,400 milliamps. And if we can take an example from the S20 Ultra, there's a very good reason for this. Apple needs the biggest battery they can fit into the smartphone, and they're doing that in several ways. One, increasing the density. Two, reducing the size of the controller on the battery. Three, by further condensing the logic board, saving space internally, as well as the new five nanometer node. So they're coming and attacking the battery problem from all areas because the S20 Ultra with its 120 20 hertz display, which the iPhone is rumored to adopt, actually shaves off almost three hours from the battery life using it in that mode, doing the same exact thing you would in 60 hertz. Not to mention 5G, which most people aren't even using yet, but will be a huge battery draw. Apple needs as much battery life as possible, and with the 12 Pro, they're expanding on that. According to Weinbach, Verizon did inquire with Apple about producing an exclusive product red iPhone 12 Pro edition to celebrate the millimeter wave 5G technology. To them, it would be a nice way to mark the beginning of an era with 5G. It's very unlikely this will happen, but if it were, the way they were planning it is with a black border, red glass, and a black Apple logo. It wouldn't be the first time a product red iPhone rumor didn't materialize. And some exclusive iOS 14 leaks with Max Weinbach. For one, the call screen will be redesigned finally with iOS 14. That's a feature that Craig Federici even responded to a fan and said that they wanted to include it with iOS 13 just didn't have enough time. Now we'll be seeing that. Weinbach reports that iOS 14 will be a minor refresh, not a major redesign. There will be some minor redesigns throughout the system, but nothing groundbreaking. It'll mostly be a stability update as Bloomberg earlier did report. And to my comment about the notch sticking around for quite some time, Weinbach reports that Apple has been working on and will be working on for quite some time, a periscope zoom system, not exactly for optical zoom, but for face ID for the front of the iPhone to reduce the notch on upcoming iPhones. This isn't for 2020. So apparently Apple is trying to relocate the face ID components and use a periscope lens system to shrink the notch into the size of the bezel on the iPhone. So that is something we could see within the next few years, not anytime soon. Apparently Apple likes the results of mini LED so much that they'll be ramping up production to many of their products, starting with a 14 inch MacBook Pro, 27 inch iMac Pro, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, as we heard later this year, Year, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, 10.2 inch iPad, and a 7.9 inch iPad mini. So Apple will start with quarter four, 2020, and all throughout 2021, we'll be seeing the rise and insurgence of mini LED. Oh boy, I can't wait. Displays, even as good as they are right now, are about to get a whole lot better. Okay, and looking into the future, XD60 modem has been announced by Qualcomm. It's very likely the chip Apple will be using in the 2021 iPhones. It uses a five nanometer architecture, so it's more energy efficient, and it can operate sub six gigahertz bands for 5G and millimeter wave at the same time to get 
even faster speeds. And speaking of the fast approaching future, I've long been awaiting the glowing Apple logo to be natively supported on the iPhone. It's a patent we saw surface and then disappear. Maybe 2021 is the year we can finally see that. And I'm saying that because I'm working on a project right now to bring it to the new iPhones. It's very difficult to do, but for the first time ever, it's gonna be the, the cleanest install for ever. Stay tuned for that. And there's been another monumental feature found in iOS 13.4 called OS Recovery, found by 9to5Mac, and it's a precursor of what's to come. So Apple is working on some sort of iOS recovery tool, which would enable your iPhone to get restored by either another iPhone or over the internet without needing to plug it into a computer. Any of you guys wanna guess what that's for? Of course, the portless iPhone, which is rumored to come in 2021. So the future is fast approaching, and this OS recovery is a much needed tool to make that happen. In fact, it goes beyond that. It could work on the Apple Watch, on the HomePod, on devices that don't have a way to plug them into the computer, so you can easily restore them just by connecting to the internet, or even over that 802.11ay short range Wi-Fi protocol with a different iOS device. The future is exciting, and the portless iPhone is happening sooner than I thought. And speaking of restoring iPhones with other iPhones, you can now jailbreak an iPhone with an Android phone. CheckRain can now be executed on Android. The Android phone must be rooted, but it's possible. And it's kind of funny. This is the new Doom, getting Doom to run on various devices. And you can jailbreak your iPhone with a PS4 even, anything that has Linux on it. What a time to be alive. Okay, and it gets better. So the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus and an iPod Touch can now run Android. Because of the CheckRain jailbreak, it's called Project Sandcastle by the Corellium team, and it enables Android to run, although an older version and very unstable. It doesn't have drivers for the camera, Bluetooth or cellular modems, but that's Android, a fresh version running on a very modern iPhone. I can't wait to do that and I'll make a video on it. And lastly, the AirPod Pro giveaway winners. Those are them. Five have been selected. I'll be contacting you soon. I'm still running the giveaway for the S20 Ultra, three of those. Instructions for that down below. And an update on our case. So we still don't have a concrete ship date. It should be in April still. We're making good headway, but because of the outbreak, it makes this very difficult to plan. Within the next couple of weeks, I hope to have a concrete date. Thank you to everybody that pre-ordered. Honestly, you guys didn't have to, but I'm honestly stunned at how much support we got and what I'm trying to grow this company into. I'm trying to make this one of the biggest and best case companies with the accessories and everything. And I just wanna say thank you so much guys for supporting that. All right, stay tuned for more videos. I got a lot cooking, peace.